Over the years, one of the most recurring questions I get about this garden is why do we have grass paths? And I find it actually fascinating just how many of you ask about it. So I thought I'd do a video outlining why I think grass paths are the best for a raised bed vegetable garden. But of course, there are some negatives that come with it. And also a type of path that I would choose, the only other type of path that I would choose if the ground wasn't suitable enough to grow grass. So stay tuned. Grass paths are the roads of the garden and it's not just to transport yourself around but also to move materials such as compost and I've got some compost here which I'm just going to start removing the bigger bits so I can create a bit of a tilth. Now I'm using a tarmac rake and I use it mainly because it's nice and heavy but one of the things that you also use a tarmac rake is to fill in potholes and roads need maintenance and so do garden paths. The only maintenance that I need to do for a grass path is strimming and I know it isn't the most environmental thing but we've got a strimmer and I think it's important to make the most of resources that you currently have and eventually it will be an electric strimmer. But I strim probably every one or two weeks during peak season. It just takes maybe 15, 20 minutes to strim the whole garden and it just keeps it nice and low. Strimming isn't that much of an effort and the best time to do it is early morning or late afternoon so you don't get too hot with the midday sun. If you saw my previous video about ways of growing food without compost, a benefit of actually strimming your garden on a fairly breezy day is that it picks up those little grass clippings and then it's going to mulch or apply those as a very light mulch onto the surface of your raised beds. So you're basically killing two birds with one stone. But for me, the thing that I love so much about grass paths is their aesthetic. And I think the green just really helps break it up because it's a nice natural colour. In fact, green is naturally calming for us humans when we see the colour. And especially at this time of year, even though it's quite early on and there's a lot of brown raised beds, the green paths just split it up really nicely. If you have a garden that doesn't have green paths and it's quite bare time of year, especially during winter, it does look a little bit industrial. And something that's really important about gardening is not just making sure that you produce lots of food, it's also making sure that you enjoy it. And for me, the benefits of having grass paths definitely outweigh the negatives, which I'm going to come on to in a second, because I just love being in this garden because it feels like it's that extra bit natural. Something that isn't very much considered about garden paths is also the health of our bodies, such as our knees. Now, if you're spending hours every single week, whether it's just recreationally or actually working uh, almost as a full-time job on your garden, it's really important that you look after your knees. And having a grass path just provides that extra absorption and protection. And I do see a lot of gardens that like to have paved slabs, and that's okay. It's okay to choose whatever you want. However, I think my needs over many years would take a toll constantly especially with waking doing lots of different movements um, might get worn down a little bit more with hard concrete paved slabs over grass now of course with all good things there are also going to be negatives associated with it I know I just mentioned about the health of knees, but there's something that contradicts that with grass paths. And that happens when it's winter time and you've had a lot of rain, grass paths can turn a bit wet, muddy and slippery. And this can be quite a hazard. So you've just got to make sure during winter that you wear suitable footwear. But a good thing about gardening is that there often isn't that much to be done during winter time. And I also find every single spring, I'm surprised just how quickly a garden path heals itself. So the fantastic thing about grass garden paths is that they're also self-healing paths. And I'm not sure there's another path out there that can offer that. There are a couple of other downsides to a garden path. The first one is that there is a potential that weeds can grow and seed. For example, these dandelions, and then these seeds can go and spread into the raised beds. 
As long as you can keep and you have a habit of keeping on top of weeds in your raised beds, just using a hoe once a week during sunny weather, it's super simple. If you're not very good at keeping on top of weeds, then this could be a downside, but it's good to get into that habit. Something else though is slugs, and this is usually the main concern when it comes to a garden path, especially if it's grass. And yes, it is a slug habitat, only though if you let the grass grow too long as the slugs can hide underneath. But you can actually use it to your advantage as a way of creating a slug magnet because during the, during the nights, this will be nice and moist and slugs will use it to cross over. So what you can do is you can find a side of a raised bed, give it a bit of a water, do this in early afternoon, put the plank over like that, come back then the next day, turn it out, and I'm sure that you'll find a load of slugs hiding underneath there. So you can actually use it to your advantage. I understand that not all gardens have grounds that are suitable to support grass paths. So what is the second best option? This is something that I learned from Liz Zorab, and it's for this section of the garden where I'm using wood chips. But the really important thing to do before applying the wood chip is to put landscape fabric underneath because if you just put wood chips straight down you're going to spend your whole life weeding your garden so put down a bit of landscape fabric and then cover it with an inch or two so three to five centimeters of wood chip and what i love about this again what i learned from liz as well is after a year or two the wood chip will begin to break down and all you need to do is scoop up that composted wood chip and mulch your beds with it it's as easy as that just get a shovel stick it in, do it every single autumn. And this is very easy to do, especially if you have a smaller garden. If you have a larger garden, it might be a little bit more tricky sourcing the quantities of wood chip you need. So the best thing you can do is to try and befriend your local tree surgeon. Hopefully this has given you a clearer idea as to why this garden has grass paths and why it's going to continue to do so. But ultimately, there's no right or wrong. It's all down to personal preference. You just need to consider what you think is best for function and also aesthetics. And if you're unsure, then test a small part of the garden with a couple of different paths for a season so you can get a better understanding because once you create a garden path, it's going to be hard to change. And the thing that you need to bear in mind is if you're going to be spending a lot of time in your garden, the way that your paths look will heavily influence the way that your garden looks.